Okay, I thought I'd go over a uh, little quick overview of some of the new things in this game. Now, obviously, there's a lot of games coming out right now. Uh, I think a lot of people are blaming this uh, not having a whole lot of traction or hype around it, around, you know, Mass Effect and all that other stuff. I don't really think the uh, the Mass Effect fan base <laughs> overlaps with a, a niche hunting game. <laughs> like, people uh, put a little too much weight into, uh, you know, other stuff that's coming out. There hasn't really been a whole lot of advertising for the game, which is a shame because there's quite a few, uh, like, major improvements to the formula that uh, even other hunting games like Monster Hunter have not done. And at the same time, it seems like most of the, you know, Monster Hunter players, or at least the ones that are big on Twitch, aren't really playing it. So, <laughs> I've been looking at the, uh, the Tokiden 2 directory on Twitch, and it, it very rarely, like, peaks over uh, 150 viewers, which is, a uh, Pretty crazy for a new game. You know, you have uh, other new games that are niche, like uh, even stuff like Tales of Berseria, which is also a niche RPG series, still had uh, way more concurrent viewers than this has had, even on release day. Overall, I think that they uh, improved the formula quite a bit, uh, especially considering the short development cycle between this and Kiwami. Uh, I don't know much about you know how they make these games, but I think that with Kiwami, they uh, maybe they had a skeleton crew working on it. Uh, there really were only a, a couple new CG little cutscenes. Uh, you know, most of the story is text, and they basically just added they added three new weapons and they tweaked some of the systems. Uh, all the things that they added were a pretty monumental improvement over Age of Demons, but it seems like they had most of their uh, staff working on this. So I can't really list everything because I'm only like maybe six or seven hours into the game, but I'll go ahead and I'll show some of the things that they've changed. Your Matama customization is different. Uh, you have a Matama that goes on your weapon, your armor, and your demon hand. And depending on what slot it's in, uh, the Matama will have a different skill. Like for instance, I have this guy in the uh, the third slot, in the demon hand slot. What that does is it gives you like a kind of a V-ism custom combo body double kind of thing. Which is pretty nice. Uh, I imagine once I get some more Matama, I'll probably make a build around that. Maybe I can make like a cool destroyer build or something. Now the other thing that's different, there are no more levels for Matamas, and there also is no more ultimate abilities. So you actually will have uh, three less overall boosts than you would in Kiwami. In Kiwami, when you maxed out a Matama, you had an ultimate ability that you could choose. So you'd have four total boosts from your Matama. Here, you could only have nine. But you don't have to level them up. Uh, basically, you just fulfill the requirements for these. And once you do, you can uh, switch them out at any time. So say, if I got this one first, then it would not lock me behind it. I wouldn't have to grind out anything else. You basically would just equip it when you want to. Oops, wrong NPC. So you can also uh, change the stats when you upgrade something. I don't know if I have any materials right now. Yeah, I don't have any materials right now, but I can show it anyway. So basically, uh, every weapon is not one and the same in this game. Uh, like, three different players could have three very different weapons. Uh, every time that you upgrade something, you can choose a different category or an attribute to focus on. So if you want to go with a crit build, which was, uh, you know, the mainstay in the first two games, then you can increase attack and dexterity. If you want a raw attack weapon, you can increase attack, and if you're running an elemental build, you can boost that as well. Now, she gives, uh, there's like a new cooking system in the game, which is kind of like, uh, what they do in the Tales games. Uh, you gather ingredients and you can get some boosts, and you will unlock more as you play. Like right now, I don't have anything too great. Like, this is probably the best one that I could get. Because this, uh, you know, gives you more crit chance. Crit chance is pretty good. I don't know if it's still as good as it was in the first two games, but it's still a, a very important stat. Especially when you stack with Verity and stuff like that. You also have these boosts that last for an hour. Uh, the game really does uh, mirror an MMO in some ways. Uh, this will make it so that you can develop your boosts a lot faster. 
which uh, it seems like you don't have to spend too much time with a Matama to max it out, which is a good thing. Uh, the grind to max out a Matama was <laughs> pretty ridiculous in the, in the last two games. And the other thing was that you had to pretty much always have like a, an Excel or a Google document open to see which Matama had what boost and stuff like that, which didn't really mesh well with the fact that this is predominantly a, a portable game. You know, the core or main platform for it is the Vita. So having to have, a, you know, a spreadsheet open or printing out the document or, you know, pulling it up on your phone or something was really annoying. Arigato. So I should also show that. So even on these Matama that I have not even touched, uh, you know, I haven't touched this guy at all. I think I may have used him, like, for a couple minutes at the beginning of the game, you can see all the boosts, so you know uh, exactly you know which Matama you want to actually put time into. It works really well. Also, if a uh, if a Matama has a boost that relates to a weapon, like this one right here. And it will give you a nice little icon, so you can go through your uh, you can go through your matama and find out which ones would be optimal for you know a specific weapon build pretty quickly. Now the game is structured in, in uh, two different ways. There's the standard you know hunting game formula where you just go to an instance area and you fight a boss, and there's also the open world. It doesn't seem like there's too many. Uh, missions where you actually go out and hunt something. For the most part, you're just uh, fighting bosses and stuff like that. But I'm only on Chapter 2, so I can't really comment on that. So, so go ahead and I'll show some open world gameplay. This game is a little loud, so hopefully you can hear me better now. We have a super sprint, which is nice. <laughs> I'm sure if you played Tales of Berseria, you watch my videos. I used a, a super speed cheat on that because of how slow you run. You actually have a, a pretty decent running speed in this. It does not take too long to get anywhere. There also are fast travel points that you will unlock. I think the open world is actually pretty advanced, especially when you consider that their lead platform for this was the Vita. It's actually pretty large. Uh, it's more of a giant hub world than an open world, but they have uh, quite a few activities that keep you interested. There is some limited platforming. There's a bunch of little random events that can happen. Uh, there's quests, kind of like an MMO. I don't know if those are random or not. It seems like they're pretty much all just, uh, you know, predetermined. So I'll run around for a bit and show some of the mechanics. Obviously the Oni will spawn. You can fight them if you want. I don't know how the uh, the Matama stuff works. I don't know how they drop, but I'll have to get back to you guys on that. There's also items around. There is a miasma mechanic where you will have to find the barrier stone and purify it. If you don't, uh, your character will run the risk of dying unless you purify it. So when you first start going out into the open world, you're heavily limited in how far you can go. Uh, it's pretty significantly locked off because there's a lot of... Uh, areas where you, you will have to purify the miasma, otherwise you can't really progress. So here's one of the events that I'll show. Now, I personally can't stand open world in anything, but I think it's done pretty well here, and, uh, you know, they didn't just completely changed to an open world game. Uh, if you play online, I don't think you can send people out into the open world at all. I don't think you can play with other people. It's only just, uh... It's only just for single player. So if you're playing this with friends, then, you know, most of your game time is going to be just like any other hunting game. It's going to be largely instant. <laughs>
Oh, here we go. I'll go ahead and I'll show off the claw skill. The demon hand mechanic is pretty cool. Uh, not only does it work like a like a Devil Bringer in DMC4, it actually has some cool new dynamics to the way that the uh, the gameplay works. When a monster flashes red, when they have a red aura around them, if you grab them with the demon hand, it will actually stagger them. So even if you're fighting something like the Manhunter, which you've fought like a thousand times in the other two games, like there's actually an interesting new dynamic to it. A lot of attacks that were really annoying to avoid in the first two games, you can actually counter them with the, uh, the Oni Parry, or whatever it's called. There's also another um, Destroyer, the Destroyer, or the Unity Destroyer from the last game has been changed into uh, a new Destroyer that works with the Demon Hand where you can permanently disable a, uh, a part on the Oni and prevent it from regenerating. I haven't really mastered it yet, but basically when you use it, the uh, a part of the a couple parts of the Oni will flash white and if you aim the demon hand at that area and you hold it down and you release it then you'll permanently destroy that part. So that adds a pretty interesting dynamic to the combat as well. And you can see the traversal is actually pretty easy. Uh, the jumping works a lot like classic games like Ocarina of Time. Uh, if you go near a place that does not have an invisible wall and uh, you know it's got some distance between it or under it then you'll jump. So you can pretty much just hold the left analog stick down and the traversal is pretty much done for you. See like right there. Now from what I've noticed uh, when you don't have an area purified your stamina goes down a lot more when you're using this storm runner mechanic. But when you have the area purified it basically takes nothing so you're definitely rewarded for exploring and purifying areas, uh, even if you're not really supposed to be in that area per se, because uh, when you come back, you'll have a, a much easier time getting through simply because you'll have uh, the area purified and you'll be able to sprint for much longer. Anyway, that's the that's basically the the brunt of the mechanics with the new stuff that they've added. I'll be doing more gameplay uh, probably once I can actually make some specialized builds. Right now, I'm kind of just running with. Uh, you know, random makeshift stuff, but I'll probably put out some guides for some of the builds that I'm using. Obviously, Tokiden is uh, a lot different from other hunting games where you can have like 10 people and all of them will have a different build. And even the cookie cutter builds in, in Kiwami, you know, a lot of the ones that I use that I talked about, there were other builds even better than that. You know, with 200, over 200 Matama in the game and, uh, all the different combinations of abilities and weapons and now you have the armor and claw skills it definitely gives you uh, even more customization than you had before so I'll be interested to see what I come up with and what other people come up, come up with. Anyway, uh, I hope this helps people. I know that there hasn't been a whole lot of people covering this probably just because there's just too much stuff coming out right now. There's like too many $60 games. I, I honestly feel like uh, they should have priced this at like $40 to try to give themselves a little bit more of a competitive edge with all the other stuff coming out, but at the same time, I mean, hunting games and big AAA stuff don't really overlap much in audiences, so I don't know how well this is this will do, but I'm going to be playing it uh, pretty much as long as it takes to finish it, and then at that point, I'll probably look into some endgame stuff, so you guys can look forward to that. Anyway, catch you guys later. Peace.